Hello! In this tutorial I will focus on writing a reusable line lemur script for both sample library articulation selection with key switches and playing drum and percussion pads. I will show how an elegant programming solution with simple scripts and a few external variables may conveniently be reused for new key switch and drum pad mappings. The starting point is a sample library with articulation key switches, loaded into a MIDI sequencer. My example is the VSL Dimension Strings library, in combination with the Logic Pro DAW software. Here we see the interface for the VSL strings. In the top left we select an articulation matrix with a set of 6 key switches. In the center we see the 4x12 matrix with the string playing techniques such as staccato, sustained, legato, etc. The column number again is selected with a key switch, now between C1 and B1. The row index is selected with a MIDI control change message, to which I have assigned the controller CC16. Let me start by demonstrating the cumbersome way of using the articulation selection matrix in the DAW. In between the MIDI note patterns, there are the blue regions that specify the appropriate key switch value and MIDI controller message. This example shows the change from sustained playing to staccato, tremolo and pizzicato. One has to memorize the switch values or pre-program the switch regions. And of course, an articulation change within a note pattern still involves MIDI editing. This slows down the workflow considerably. So, I've been looking for a more convenient approach, which is based on the Line Lemur editor for creating flexible MIDI controllers on an iOS device. This is the Lemur editor overview on the Mac. The user interface contains a number of windows. We build the string articulation controller interface shown in the center from an object library shown in the top right panel. The controller object hierarchy is shown in the lower right section. We will have a closer look at this later. For simple mapping between controller objects and MIDI messages there is the upper left window. However, for the articulation matrix selection based on a combination of MIDI note and CC value this leads to complex indexing. And that is the reason for ignoring this technique and instead focus on writing more flexible scripts. And that is what we see in the lower central panel, which contains the multi-line script editor and the listing for the script selected in the hierarchy window. Let's briefly jump to the end result, the iOS controller interface for the VSL string library articulation selector. This Lima controller can do many things, but in this episode the focus is on the development of the central articulation matrix. We recognize the 4x12 elements copied from the VSL original. This controller can be used for playing and recording, as I will now demonstrate. Here you see how pressing the iPad switch elements triggers the string articulation. Each pad element is programmed with the correct MIDI note and CC16 controller value. While recording, press the lemur controller pad elements to send the MIDI key switch and controller messages to the sequencer software. An additional MIDI keyboard is used for entering musical pitches. Together these are written into a MIDI region. We may inspect the result in the Piano Roll Editor. Here we see a data lane with CC16 controller values for selecting the matrix row 
and the key switches for selection of the articulation type column. And now it's time to reveal the details of the Lima scripts. We return to the editor. When we zoom in on the project hierarchy for the string articulation selector, we notice that there are two scripts, art init for controlling object initialization and art select for handling the pressing of pad matrix elements. Then there are five external variables used by the scripts. The most important is the vector variable called old state, which contains the matrix state vector x. This binary vector contains ones for the elements that are currently pressed. And now we will read through the source code listings. The initialization script art init is executed when the lemur controller opens. See the criterion on load in the box at the top. I've copied the lines of code and increased the font size for easier reading. I will highlight the most relevant sections and lines. The VSL string articulation matrix consists of 12 columns and 4 rows. So in total we have 48 path elements for this controller object geometry. We define the text labels for each element and write these on the pads. These labels are identical to the original articulation names in the VSL matrix. We recognize articulations such as staccato, sustained, accents, allegato, etc. We also define the MIDI notes that correspond to these key switches. There are four rows with identical pitches. The matrix row number is selected with the correct value for the MIDI CC16 controller. We set the matrix state vector elements to zero, indicating that no elements were pressed when the interface was loaded. And that completes the first script. The art select script handles the user interaction with the articulation key switch matrix. It is triggered when any pad element is pressed or released, in other words, when the state vector x changes. The most important lines are right at the start of the script and shown in orange. We write the current state vector into a new local variable that is then compared with the stored external variable old state. The difference between the new and old vector tells us which elements were pressed or released. We execute a loop over the pad elements. Whenever an element is pressed, the state changes from 0 to 1 and we send the combination of the corresponding MIDI note on message and the controller value for CC16. Releasing a pad element means the difference value is minus 1. This triggers the sending of a note off message. So, the notes have a duration while the element is pressed down, a property that comes in handy when we want to use the same script for playing drum pads. Finally, we update the external state variable and replace it with the current vector, and that does the trick. We now have a pair of simple scripts that are easy to read and reusable for other key switching cases and also for playing drum and percussion kits. We edit the pad text labels, colors and MIDI key numbers for each new sample library. Depending on the size of the matrix, this takes between 10 and 30 minutes to create the mapping. Lemur allows us to save this matrix module as a personal library component, ready for importing into new controller projects. I will prove the reusability with a drum kit example in Native Instruments Battery 4. Myself, I now have a collection of such controllers for many battery kits, but also for the drum and percussion libraries in the Logic EXS24 sample player. Once again, I will demonstrate playing and recording the drum pads. Here's the sound of the kit with MIDI region playback from Logic. And here is the Lemur iOS controller after mapping the drum kit layout. I press the iPad matrix elements to trigger the playing of individual instruments. However, I need an additional fader where the slider position determines the note on velocity value. A 
Again, I demonstrate the recording of drum patterns into the Logic MIDI sequencer. The iPad is connected to the Mac with a USB cable. The piano roll inspector shows that we have recorded pitches and no durations. Note the constant velocity in the MIDI region. And now the details. We look at the drum pads object in the Lima project hierarchy. Again, we have the two scripts for matrix initialization and handling of the path elements. This is completely similar to the articulation key switch design. In the set of external variables, we recognize our friend, the state vector variable old state. Let's see what's in the script. The pads init script is executed when the Lima controller is opened on the iPad. In the source code listings, we recognize familiar pieces of code. There is the definition of the drum kit matrix geometry. Here, four rows by six columns. A new aspect for the drum kits is the color definition for individual instruments. For the string articulations, we use the single uniform color. Comments help us to remember what color to use for the drum kit pieces. We assign these color definitions to the pad elements. I use consistent and meaningful variable naming. Again, we have to provide the set of MIDI key numbers for this drum kit. This section of code defines and assigns text labels to the pad elements. The script closes with the initialization of the matrix state vector. By setting all pad values to zero, the not pressed state. The play pads script is triggered when we press or release any of the pad matrix elements. That will lead to a change in the state vector x. And the essential step returns here. We assign the current state to a new vector variable that is then compared with the old state vector. The difference vector will tell us which path elements were pressed or released. Note the last line with the definition of the note on velocity as the reading of the fader position. There is a loop over all matrix elements. For each newly pressed element we send a note on message. When the element has been released there is the note off MIDI message. In this application we do not send MIDI control change messages as was required for the VSL articulation selector. At the end we replace the external state variable with the current update. That concludes my demonstration of this design approach. I've created a modular design with reusable scripts that are easy to modify for a new application. We only have to edit these scripts and away we go. That is great for rapid controller development. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Share the links to or like these video tutorials and support my efforts. You may want to visit my website for additional content. And as always, thanks for watching.